Hey there, everybody. P. Pardo here from Sea of Tranquility. Welcome to another episode of What's Hot with Sea of Tranquility. I lied. I told you there'd be no more today. Well, we got another one for you. Again, another one that I've been meaning to get to you for a while. It's the debut solo album from the great wobbler keyboard player Lars Frederick Froisley. The album is called Fire Fortellinger. I think that's how they pronounce it. Something like that. Like I mentioned, uh, Lars, the keyboard player from the great Norwegian prog rock band Wobbler, basically recorded this during the COVID-19 era, right? While the, the band were unable to really get together and record an album, he just started working on stuff on his own and basically did almost the entirety of this album all on his own, plays all the keyboards, sings, does the drums. The only thing that he does not do on the album is play bass. And there's no guitars on the album, by the way. And uh, the bass was um, taken on by Nikolai Hangsley, who's in a band called uh, Big Bang, I believe. And he plays uh, Rickenbacker bass, Fender Precision bass, Fender Jazz bass, and Fender Telecaster bass. But everything else on the album is by none other than Lars Frederick Froisley. He plays uh, other, uh, well, play, plays drums obviously, but uh, Hammond organ, Mellotron, Mini Moog, Chamberlain, Honer clavinet, Yamaha keyboards, uh, ARP or ARP pro soloist, um, Selena string ensemble, Fender Rhodes, Wurlitzers, all sorts of stuff. The list of keyboards is ridiculous uh, that he played on this particular album, and uh, I've just got the little cardboard sleeve promo but this is basically what's going to look like this is uh, on charisma records this was just released on june 2nd so a couple days back right i would say if you like the music of wobbler you're probably going to really like this the one thing uh there are no english lyrics so all the vocals are sung in uh, the native norwegian tongue i will say lars not really a great singer that's my only reservation about this album. Uh, thankfully, you know, with it's only four tracks, and you know, the first song is 17 minutes long, the second is seven, third is just under seven, and the fourth is uh, just under 17. You can imagine there's lots of extended kind of keyboard passages and soundscapes and things like that, but there are a good amount of vocals on the album. Like I said, it's in Norwegian. I don't really mind the native tongue, that usually doesn't bother me all that much. Uh, he's got kind of a harsh voice. Um, it, it's not terrible, but it's, to me, not overly pleasing. I might have liked this album a little bit better if there were no vocals on it. Um, but I, I'm, I'm dealing with it. I, I, you know, the music is so good, I'm, I, I'm trying to kind of like overlook that. And like I said, the vocals don't permeate each and every song, so don't let that stray you. But I would definitely go check this out and listen to it first. So again, the, the first track is, uh, again, I'm going to butcher these, uh, Ritter of Domadag, all right? Lots of dramatic keyboard swells. There's Mellotron galore on this album. Loads of Hammond organ and Moog synths and all the other ones that I mentioned. Uh, you got uh, Etsted under Himmel Velvet, something like that. Jartigan. And then the last track is uh, Naturen's Cathedral. All right. Maybe that means natural cathedral or nature's cathedral, something like that. I'm guessing, right, the English translation. Uh, for me... Um, First of all, the third track, Jartigan, is probably the most upbeat and rocking song on the album. That's pretty busy, pretty complex. Half the song does these kind of really cool time changes and just the, the arrangement is really busy and quirky. That's really pretty damn good. For me, though, I really like the two epics that open and close the album. I think they're both terrific. Uh, Naturin's Cathedral has some really nice use of dynamics. The keyboards are just great. I mean, this guy's such a wonderful keyboard player, and I love the fact that he uses all the vintage stuff, so it sounds like something from, like, 1971 or 72. Uh, the Moog work is great. The Hammond organ is off the charts. There's, uh, the first track, Ritter of Dom and Dog, has got loads of Mellotron in it. It's haunting. It's just... No. Musically speaking, a lot of what you get here sounds like Wobbler, minus the guitars, right, and minus the uh, you know the English and language vocals and better vocals from his bandmate, right. But uh, I would say his vocals aren't awful. They're just they're taking me a lot a, a little bit longer to get used to, 
right? Again, I, I don't mind the, the Norwegian language, um, but he's, he's a little on the harsh side. But again, it's not terrible. And like I said, musically, this is off the chart stuff. So as far as like, what do I rank this? I probably would have ranked this higher uh, given my issue with his vocal style, but I'm still going to give it a four out of five star because I think musically, this is fantastic. If you love Norwegian prog, 70s inspired prog, if you love Wobbler, you're definitely going to need to check this out. So uh, Lars Frederick Freusley, Fire Fortellinger is the name of the album. You know, it looks like a Wobbler album, right? It's quite good. It's quite good. It's on Charisma Records. And if you want to go check out his, I'll put the link down below to his Bandcamp page where you can go check this out. Um, it's uh, Lars Frederick Froisley.bandcamp.com. I'll, I'll put it all down below for you. But uh, yeah, and, and all the lyrics uh, have to do with ancient Norwegian stuff, like Ragnarok and what have you. So that's kind of cool, right? Even though. I don't understand Norwegian, so it's kind of lost on me, but that's just kind of what the, the information that was given. But yeah, if you love old analog keyboards, and his drumming is pretty good. Uh, he does a fine job on the drums, and a lot of big Rickenbacker bass. I, I want to give credit to Nikolai. He does some superb uh, bass work on this album. So if you like that big kind of Chris Squire type of bass, you know, Chris Squire, Giddy Lee, uh, John Tao type of thing, you're going to love this. So, yeah, very, very cool. Four out of five star. Check it out. Link will be below where you can go investigate it further and visit us on the web at www.seatranquility.org. We're on Facebook. We're on YouTube all together all the damn time. Please subscribe if you haven't already and click on that notification bell so you get alert of all of our content as it posts. And please do hit the like button before you leave. Also, we got the links below to our Ko-Fi page for channel donations as well as our merch page. So thanks in advance for all of that. I am P. Pardo. We'll see you real soon here. That'll be the last review of today, I promise. More coming next week. We've got uh, Mystery, Tanith, Ray Alder, Big Big Train. Uh, what else? The Midnight Callers. We got uh, also a cool new one from uh, Witch Hazel. We got M. Opus. We've got Elvin King. We've got uh, Brand. We got more Inside Out stuff. We got uh, Avkervist or Avkervast, however they say that. Uh, Einar Solberg, all, all sorts of stuff. We got the Neil Sean uh, Journey Through Time live set. So and and all the stuff that's coming in to that. Uh, yeah, it's there's no shortage of stuff. So uh, the next few weeks will be very busy. Till then, I am Pete Parlo. Thanks for watching, everybody. Take care. Bye bye.